We're going to do some simple economic theory by looking at sharecropping, or in more theoretical terms, this could be called principal agent theory. Imagine a simple setting where there's a farmer who works on some land, and there's a separate landowner. The person working the land and the landowner have to get together and write some kind of contract to determine how the proceeds from that land will be shared. This is the basic problem of sharecropping. Obviously, the contract has to pay the farmer enough so that the farmer is willing to do some work, but the contract also has to give the landowner enough so that the landowner is willing to put his land on the market to be farmed. In technical language, those are sometimes called the participation constraints. One possible but extreme version of the contract would be for the worker to pay the landowner a fixed fee to be able to work the land, and after that fixed fee is paid, then the farm worker keeps all of the output that he has produced. There are at least two possible problems with this kind of contract. First, it requires the worker to put what is perhaps a fair amount of money up front, and the farm worker may not have that money. He may be wanting to work on the farm precisely because he doesn't have the money. The second and more fundamental problem is that this kind of contract imposes the risk on the farm worker. So if there's bad weather, if there's a bad harvest, if there's some other kind of problem, then the landowner bears none of the risk, he has received the fixed fee, and the farm worker bears all of the risk, and it may not be efficient for the farm worker to be bearing so much risk. Keep in mind that very typically farm workers are poorer than landowners, so this kind of contract is putting all of the risk on the poorer party, and again, that may not be the most effective way to run this market. Another way to run this contract, which is commonly found, is for the two parties to share the risk. So imagine that the farm worker pays to the landowner a smaller upfront fee, or maybe no upfront fee at all, and the output that is produced on the land is shared by the two parties according to some formula. Just for purposes of an example, you can imagine a contract that shared that output 50-50. In this case, some of the risk is borne by the farm worker, and some of the risk is borne by the landowner. For risk sharing, this is clearly a better and more effective contract because, as was stated, the risk is shared. But now there are some new problems introduced. When half of the output is to be shared with the landowner, one possibility is that the farmer will underreport how much he is producing and, in essence, steal some from the landowner. The landowner, of course, may be worried about this. Another problem is that if the farmer is having to hand over half of what he produces on the land, this is in effect like a 50% tax rate on the farmer's production. So the farmer will exert somewhat less effort compared to the contract where the farmer is the complete residual claimant keeping all of the output for himself. So in this contract, what we have is better risk sharing, but inferior incentives when it comes to doing the actual work. The economic theory here is pretty straightforward, and it corresponds to what we observe in the real world. First, there tends to be a trade-off when writing a contract between that contract being good at sharing risk and whether that contract puts too high a tax on effort. That is, you have to choose, and markets are always weighing off these two qualities of a contract at the margin, risk sharing versus tax on effort. Second, what we observe in the real world, and also what the theory predicts, is that most contracts in the market, whether sharecropping or just a normal job, will tend to have a fixed part that someone is paid no matter what, and a variable part, where there's some kind of sharing or some kind of formula where there's a greater payment when output is high and a smaller payment when output is low. Finally, for most contracts, we end up with the case where effort is somewhat underprovided in the interests of risk sharing. That means there's generally a boss who wishes that the workers would work harder, and the workers do not work harder in part because they know that part of the proceeds from their efforts goes to the boss. That's not maybe an ideal way for things to be, but often it's the best we can do, given that contracts have to serve this other function of sharing of risk. For more on this topic, you can Google economics of sharecropping, or if you want to go very technical, you could always try Googling principal agent theory.